بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Continuing reading from the book Al-Adab Al-Mufrad We are now in chapter 280 Salutation to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Abu Sa'id al-Khudri said, the Prophet sallallahu said, if any Muslim does not have anything to give us charity, he should say in his supplication, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin, abduka wa rasulak, wa salli ala, ala al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minati wa al-muslimin wa al-muslimat. Oh Allah, bless Muhammad, your slave and your messenger, and bless the believers, both men and women, and the Muslims, both men and women, and that will be a purity for him. However, this has a weak chain. Abu Huraira said, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, wa barak ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad, kama barakt ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim, wa tarham ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin, kama tarhamta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ibrahim. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as you have blessed Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Shower blessings on Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as you have showered blessings on Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. Show mercy to Muhammad and the family of Muhammad, as you have showed mercy to Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim. I will testify for him on the day of rising and I will intercede for him. This also has a weak chain. Anas and Malik ibn Aus said, The Prophet ﷺ went out to relieve to use it to relieve to relieve himself called to nature and did not find anyone to accompany him Umar went out and followed him with a clay pot or wooden vessel he found him prostrated by a water channel he sat behind him until the Prophet lifted his head he said you have done well Umar when you find me prostrating you kept back Jibril came to me and said if someone sends salutations on you once Allah will bless him ten times and raise him ten degrees so this hadith Contains the following benefits among others. One, it is beneficial to be in the company of the scholars. Umar followed the Prophet ﷺ and benefited. Two, teachers should acknowledge good things done by their students more so when such will lead to them doing more good things. It exhorts towards saying Salat and Salam of the Prophet ﷺ. Imam al-Albani rahimullah explained, The best of what is said about the meaning of Salat of the Prophet ﷺ is that of Abu Abu Aliya, that Allah's Salat on his Prophet is his praising and extolling him, and the Salat of the angels and others on him is asking for more of that from Allah. 4. Allah the Mighty and Sublime rewards the good deeds of his slaves in manifold. And Anas ibn Malik reported that the Prophet وسلم, said, Whoever sends salutation once for me, Allah blesses him ten times and removes ten errors from him. Chapter 281 The person who hears the Prophet وسلم, mentioned in his presence and does not send salutations to him. Jabin ibn Abdullah said, The Prophet وسلم, climbed onto the mimbar. When he climbed the first step, he said, Ameen. When he climbed the second step, he said, Ameen. Then he climbed the third step and said, Ameen. They asked, Messenger of Allah, we heard you say Ameen three times. He said, when I climbed the first step, Jibreel, peace upon him, came to me and said, Wretched is the slave who does not go, who goes through Ramadan and obtains no benefit from it and is not forgiven. I said, Ameen. Then he said, Wretched is the slave whose parents are alive, either one or both, and they are not a means for him to enter the garden, meaning through obedience and serving them. I said, Ameen. Then he said, Wretched is the slave who, when you are mentioned in his presence, does not send salutations to him. I said, Ameen. So the point of this hadith is showing that it's obligatory that whenever the Prophet's name is mentioned in our presence, we should send salutations to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From the benefits of saying salutation upon the Prophet, is, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is success and prosperity, which is, the, which is what the Sharia means here, which refers to entrance into the garden. Abu Hadir, Anhu said, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever prays for blessings for me once, Allah blesses him ten times. And Abu Huraira said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam climbed the member and said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. He was asked, Messenger of Allah, you have not been doing this before. He said, Jibril said to me, shame, which literally means, may the person's nose be pushed into the dust of a slave who is with his two parents, or one of them, while they are alive and does not enter the garden. I said, Ameen. Then he said, Shame on, on a slave who goes through Ramadan and is not forgiven. I said, Ameen. Then he said, Shame on a man who, when you are mentioned in his presence, does not pray for you. I said, Ameen. 
And Ibn Abbas said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left Juwayhira, daughter of Harith Ibn Adrar. Her name had been Bara and the Prophet Sallallahu had changed it to Juwayhira. He left and did not want to go to her in a while. To her while her name was Bara. Later when he went back to her after forenoon, she was still sitting in the same place supplicating. He said, are you still sitting after I left you? I supplicated four phrases three times. If they were weighed against all your words, they would outweigh them. So he saw that she'd been sitting there for a very long time making dhikr. So he said, if you say these, they will outweigh all of what you've said. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Adada khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zinata arshihi wa midada kalimati. Glory be to Allah and with his praise. In number as great as his creation and in accordance with his own pleasure and the weight of his throne and the extent of his words. So this hadith shows us one, the virtue of these expressions. Two, it is even more beneficial to employ comprehensive formulas during supplications. Three, the excellence of Juwayhara radiallahu anha. She would sit for such a long time giving remembrance of Allah. Four, that it is allowed to change one's name if it is from those names that are prohibited or discouraged in the Sharia, such as the names that show disobedience to Allah or that have roots with evil people or the like. Five, the Benevolence of the Prophet Sallallahu he would guide the people to the best and easiest forms of attaining their lofty goals. And Abu Huraira said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Seek refuge with Allah from Jahannam. Seek refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave. Seek refuge with Allah from the trials of the Dajjal. And seek refuge with Allah from the trials of life and death. So this shows us that seeking refuge from the tribulations that the Dajjal imposter will bring about in the end times implies refuge from following him. As for the trials of life and death, Imam Ibn Taqiq al-Eid rahimullah said, it is, it is one what one faces of trials with worldly things, desires and things we do not know. And the greatest of them is the issue of one's end at the point of death. As regards to the trials of death, it, sh it could mean the trials while one is passing away. And it, i.e. the trial, is joined with death because of its nearness to it. It could also mean the trial in the grave. And for us to recap on that, brothers and sisters, we've heard on the great reward that we should not miss out on of saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sending peace and blessings and salutations on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we hear his name. And we know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever send salutations upon me Allah will send salutations upon him ten times and this shows us the importance and encouragement to do this and get that great reward inshallah and until next time assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh